In this video, I'm going to show you how to add different backgrounds to your poster. So we've already created our file and we have it in front of us. It's opened up, it's got the white background and now we're wanting to change the background colours. So if you're looking to have just a plain background colour and you know what type of colours you're after, so my theme is singing in the rain, so I know I'm after some blue colours, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new layer that's going to be my background layer. And the way I do that is go to Layer, New Fill Layer, and it's a new fill layer because we want it to fill the entire page, and we're choosing Colour Fill. Now this brings up this lovely box here, we'll put it over here. We'll call it the Colour Picker, and this allows us to select the colours we're after. Okay, so it's automatically set to blue because I've been using that, but you can move this, drag this up and down. So say you're after more yellow colours, you can um, move the circle around to get the colour you're after and the colours show in this box here. Okay, so have a wee play around with that. I'm going to choose blue colours because I am after a blue background. And I'm going to choose a more lighter muted blue colour. So I'll move my circle over here and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to click OK and it colours the full page. Now if we go over to the side panel and click on layers, because I selected layer and new fill layer, you can see over here I've created a new layer on top of my background layer. So if we take the eye away and remove that colour fill layer, We've just got the white of the background, click the eye and it's back on top. So that's how you get a nice plain one colour background for your poster. So I'm next going to show you how to create a gradient layer. So perhaps you want your layer to be dark at the bottom, going to light at top, or the other way around, dark at the top, light at the bottom. This will just give a little bit of variation to your background. And it's something that I think might look quite good for my idea that I have for my Singing in the Rain poster. So in order to do that, we are wanting to go to Layer again. And we're wanting to go to New Fill Layer. And we're wanting to select Gradient Fill. Now, this is a new layer that will go on top of any other layers that you have there. And that's why it's produced this gradient fill layer in black and white on top of what I already had. So you can see it brings up the properties of a gradient fill. And we have lots of options here. There's some that you really don't have to look at. This bit down the bottom, I would just ignore. What we're looking at here is the style of gradient. So this is a linear style. You can see there's a definite line where it's from dark through to white. And it shows you here the angle of that line. So if we start to move this angle around, it starts to change where the areas go from light and dark. So you can have a little mess around with that, okay? Now I know I want the dark at the top of my poster going towards light, okay? So I'm going to do my angle down the bottom here. Now the other things you can do if you're not after a linear style is you can have different choices here. There's radio, which is obviously circular. Okay, and that's bringing the dark area into the middle and making it lighter around the edges. And if I click here on reverse, that will switch it around the other way. Take that off. Let's see, there's angle. This one's a bit bizarre because it goes from dark and I think it goes right round in a circle through to light. There's reflected, which means the centre point is dark going out to light, or again, if you reverse it, it'll go the other way. So dark both sides into white. That might be something that might be quite nice for a poster design. Or we've got a diamond shape. Again, diamond shape in the middle with the, the lightest point. If we click on reverse, it switches the colours around. Okay, but I am very keen just to have a linear, so let's go back to there. I've changed my angle, so the dark's at the top and light at the bottom. 
Now I obviously don't want this to be black and white. I'm wanting to add my blues into this. And the way we do that is we click on this little bar here that says gradient, double click on that and it gives us the gradient editor. And this is, allows us to change the colors that we are working with. So you'll see here at the bottom, we've got black right through to white and we've got a black box and a white box. And it's these ones we're wanting to change, okay? So we click on the black, if we double click, and then it brings us down here. Custom, which means you can click here and do your color picker again. Or if you'd already done your color picker and you have your two colors over here, so I've got my dark blue and my light blue. The dark blue being at the front means it's the foreground color and the light blue being behind that means it's the background color. So I'm going to select the dark area for the black box as my foreground color, which is the darker blue. And you can see it's placed in this box. And then I'm going to choose my white color here. And I'm going to choose that as the background color that I have already in my background. Now, if I was to switch these around, we would need to switch them around here. Okay. You can do it manually, like I have shown you, which means you would just choose custom. So we're on the, the dark at the top here and you could change that to whatever you wanted that to be. So maybe you want it to be darker. I quite like that actually. You could click OK. And maybe you wanted to change this. You could even change it to, so if we go to custom here, you might want to go really white. Maybe I'm going to make it a little bit paler actually. And then click OK. So just remember it would be custom if you want to just click here and choose the colours yourself. Or if you've already chosen the colours in your foreground and your background box over here, you would select foreground and we're going to choose that one as foreground and then go back to this box and choose that as background. Oh! Now we're wanting to position it a little bit more, so let's bring that back. There we are. There we are, we've learned something new. I didn't know you could actually drag this as well to vary the amount of gradient that you have. So that's quite clever. But I'm quite liking it going from dark to the top all the way down to light quite evenly. And then I click OK. And that's created my gradient background. So that's all the properties up there. Obviously we can reverse it like I've shown you before which would switch the lighter colour and the darker colour around. And then if you wanted to then choose again, try it with your radio I'm not that keen on that angle one myself, but maybe someone might be. Diamond, reflected is quite nice as well, again, depending on your design. But I'm wanting to stay with linear. So once we've chosen the properties that we want, we can close that down. And if we go to layer, we can see it's brought this new gradient fill layer on top. If we hide that, you can see we've still got the plain colour fill layer that we've shown earlier. And if we remove that and hide that, we're back to our white background. So you have different options that you can show here. And it's quite good to keep these layers here so that when you are doing your design, you can try out different background types. Just be sure that you are always file, save as a PSD document. And that means it won't merge all this down together. It will keep them as layers for you to play around with. Now we're going to look at how you can create a patterned background. So the way we do this, if we look at layer, we've got our background layer here and our colour fill layer that we've been working on. Now we are wanting to use an image that we've scanned in to create a pattern with. So I've already scanned it in and if I go to file open to find that image, 
I'm going to use these raindrops that I have um, created earlier. These are little paper cut raindrops here that I've glued onto a piece of paper and I've scanned this in using my iPhone scanner. So I want to cut these out. In order to do that, I want to use the magic wand tool. So as we can see, this gives us a menu bar at the top. And I'm wanting my tolerance to be up at 100. So that means it will select um, less of the sort of little dirty marks on the paper and more of the solid colours. So I've just clicked on each raindrop, pressed shift and clicked on each one to select them all. Go to select, inverse and then press delete. And it gets rid of all the area around the outside. I'm then going to crop that so I'm just collecting the raindrops. So I use my selection tool, come in quite close, so it's just the raindrops that I'm selecting, like this, and then I'm going to image crop, and that will reduce the background size here. So we've got a transparent background, you can see that here, and we've got just the raindrops. So I'm wanting to turn these round obviously, so I'm going to image, transform and then rotate and that will flip that round 180 degrees so they're facing the right direction. I then want to bring um, this pattern into my design. So I have to make this a motif. In order to do that I go to edit, define new pattern and that will make this little square here my motif. If I go back to my main design, you can see I've got the two layers initially. If I hide the colour fill, we've just got the white background layer. And I'm going to new, and I'm going to new fill layer, and this time it's a pattern fill. Now it has automatically selected this pattern for me, but if I click on the pattern square, you will see my little raindrops. And that's because we did the define pattern on our image previously. We can then mess around with these sections here, so we can make it um, the alignment of the X and the Y different, so that we can either have it going um, off the page, or we can have it more squared up to the page. And then obviously we can change the scale, so we can have tiny raindrops, so they're almost unidentifiable, or we can increase them to be really large raindrops. And you can mess around with that pattern in any way that you like. So you can see this pattern's almost seamless and that's because we removed the background of our image previously. If I hide that and go back to layers, you can see we've got a pattern fill layer and we've also got a colour fill layer. So if I select that, it makes a blue background. Okay, I can change the opacity here of my pattern fill to make them more um, opaque. Okay, so that would be quite good if you're wanting it just to be a subtle background when you're going to put your text and stuff over the top. If we go back to the pattern properties, here's another one I did earlier. I cut out just the one raindrop. And I've created a pattern with this raindrop, just repeated. Again, we might want to make it really small, a little bit more subtle. If I move the X and Y, I can have it going off the page in a way that I want. Again, I can put my colour in the background, which is quite nice, quite like that. And I can make it a little bit more opaque. Again, it's just making your background a little bit more subtle so that you can then work on top of it with any scanned images. So remember those two layers together. If I'm wanting to merge them together, I'm going to Layer Merge Visible, and that will put my colour fill and my pattern layer together.